Good afternoon, dear friends. We are about to begin this Mass of Wednesday of the 10th week in ordinary time. In today's Mass, we continue to pray for you and pray for your loved ones and pray for people you carry in your heart every day. We pray for our country in this moment of great strife, pray for peace, pray for reconciliation, and pray for racial harmony in our local societies. We pray for our police department, pray for our lawmakers, pray for our governors, our mayors, pray for our president, our lawmakers in both houses, that God may provide guidance at this time. Pray for those who are sick, pray for those who have died, and ask God's grace for anyone who may be in need at this time. I'll also invite you to bring your concerns before God and let us pray together. Our opening hymn for today is City of God, City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all those who weep, the people in darkness have seen a great light, the Lord of our longing has conquered the light. Let us build a city of God, may our tears be turned into dancing, for the Lord our light and our love has turned the night into day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, we bring your intentions from this altar to God's grace, and to, to God's altar in heaven, and ask God's grace on you all. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. For the times we have not listened to your word, we are sorry. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. For the times we have failed to listen to each other, we are sorry. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. For the times we have failed to listen to our, for our own consciences, we are sorry. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of 1 Kings. Ahab sent to all the children of Israel and had the prophets assemble on Mount Carmel. Elijah appealed to all the people and said, how long will you straddle the issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. The people, however, did not answer him. So Elijah said to the people, I am the only surviving prophet of the Lord. And there are 450 prophets of Baal. Give us two young bulls. Let them choose one. Cut it into pieces and place it on the wood, but start no fire. I shall prepare the other and place it on the wood, but start no fire. You shall call on your gods, and I will call on the Lord. The God who answers with fire is God. All the people answered, 
agree. Elijah then said to the prophets of Baal, Choose your own young lamb and prepare it first, for there are more of you. Call your gods, but do not start the fire. Taking the young bull that was, that was turned over to them, they prepared it and called Baal from morning to noon, saying, Answer us, Baal. But there was no sound and no one answering. And they hopped around the altar they had prepared. When it was noon, Elijah taunted them, Call louder, for he is a god and may be meditating or may have retired or may be on a journey. Perhaps he's asleep and must be awakened. They called out louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears as was their custom until blood gushed over them. Noon passed and they remained in prophetic state until the time for offering sacrifice. But there was no sound. No one answered, and no one was listening. Then Elijah said to, the, to all the people, Come here to me. When the people had done so, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been destroyed. He took twelve stones for the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord had said, Your name shall be Israel. He built an altar in honor of the Lord with the stones and made a trench around the altar large enough for two measures of grain. When he had arranged the wood, he cut up the young bull and laid it on the wood. Filled four jars with water, he said, to pour it over the burnt offering and over the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he said. And they did it the third time. The water flowed around the altar, and the trench was filled with water. At the time of offering sacrifice, the prophet Elijah came forth and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and have done all of these things by your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me that these people may know that you, Lord, are God, and that you have brought them back to their senses this day. The Lord's fire came down and consumed the burnt offering, woods and stones and dust, and lapped up the water in the trench. Seeing this, all the people fell prostrate and said, The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, Keep me safe, O Lord, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O Lord, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, you are. Keep me safe, O Lord, you are my hope. They multiply their sorrows who caught other gods. Blood libations to them I will not pour out nor will I take their names upon my lips. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. O Lord, my allotted portion and cup, you it is who hold fast my Lord. I set the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O Lord, you are my hope. You will show me the path of life, fullness of joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Teach me your paths, my God, and guide me in your truth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do you think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets? I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of the letter will pass from the law 
until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of this commandment and teaches others to do so will be called the least in, in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever teaches, whoever obeys and teaches this commandment will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today I would like to reflect with you from the gospel reading, but also draw inspiration from the first reading. These readings are so apt at a time like this, where our country is seeing an unfolding, an unfolding of protest against law enforcement and against law. These readings come as very instructive lessons for how to deal with that. that that's how I look at it. Naturally, we don't like law because it restricts us. It limits our ability to do things as we choose or as we would like. And the reason why from the beginning God gave laws the very first law God gave us, that's why there is natural law that God gave us that we must all abide by. You could not, never choose not to abide by natural law. But there is also moral law that God gave us reason to set up for ourselves because that's the only way to, for us to be able to live together and have our interest and yet respect the space of other people's interests and the rights of other people to have their own interests. So law comes to mediate our interactions with each other. In fact, that is the essence of government. Government based on how Thomas Jefferson articulated it and before him, philosophers like Thomas Hobbes and others. Law, the essence of law or government is that you and I are able to live together respecting the limits and the rights of others. So government comes to guarantee that possibility. Otherwise, we would have no need for government and no need for law. If we were all angels, there would be no need for that. And so that's the reason why we have laws. Now, I don't know what Jesus was answering, what the Lord was answering here, but my presumption is that someone had asked me a question about if he was here to abolish the law and to abolish the prophet, if it was a new deal, the new thing, and to free us from the limitations of law and to free us from the restrictions that law imposes on us. Could you imagine, for instance, if there was no traffic laws? Could you imagine the craziness of some people that they will just drive through the traffic light and not have to worry? Could you imagine the number of accidents that will create could you imagine if people could speed their cars? Because some cars have about 300 miles per hour speed rate. Could you imagine if people were driving that way? So what government does is to set those rules to make sure I'm safe or you are safe while using the same limited resources on earth. So there's a reason for law. So this person must have asked, must have asked the Lord, have you come? To abolish all of these mosaic laws that don't allow us to live our lives and be the kind of people we want to be and do. And I believe that's what the Lord was answering to. It says, do not think in case you are beginning to think that I have come to abolish the law. You need the law. The law is important. Prophecy is also important. Regulations are important. They are necessary for the survival of human existence and indeed for the safety of the human society. Laws are important, they are essential. And you can never have laws without law enforcement. It doesn't make any sense. If you have law and there's no one to enforce the law, that does not make no sense. And so the Lord goes on to say, I have come not to abolish them. That means he recognizes the imperfection of the laws. So yes, those, those laws have, make sense. They do have their value and their importance. So I'm not going to abolish them. My job is to come and make them better. 
to come and perfect them, to give them something that is missing. Now, these laws were mostly legalistic. That means they did not have spirit or soul. People just observed regulations and rules, forgetting the spirit of the law. What the Lord was to do was to inject the soul into the law, just so that the law is there to serve human beings and humanity not to stifle or to make their lives impossible not to drain their rights but to make sure that people live fully and totally and completely so when the lord said i came that you may have life and have it more abundantly i think that's exactly what he was talking about that i came to rectify and to sanitize and to cleanse all the excesses or all the dangers or all the things that are imperfect about law and to make it to make law have a human heart that's what God sent the Lord Jesus to do so it was to infuse into law the human spirit and the voice of God and so when I hear uh, how many people in our society are today conversing for the abolishing of law enforcement or the disbanding of law enforcement yeah that is misadvised that is misinformed and it doesn't make any sense yes it might win you some applause all right it might win you some applause but it does not make any sense because you may not even be able to live in a world where there is no law or no law enforcement because like i said forget about law if there's no one to enforce the law so we do need law enforcement we have always had it throughout the entire human history there have always been those who enforce laws there's no there's no even in, in even in local societies you have people who enforce laws who hold people accountable for violating laws now if there's a problem because we are human beings if there's a problem with law enforcement we'll fix what's wrong we will not abolish them we will not disband them and so on um, the call that kind of court is not reasonable, is not responsible. That's exactly what these people were calling for, asking Jesus to disband law. And he says, no, 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 I'm not doing that. Because that's important, that's valuable. So I, I hope that, well, unfortunately as a society, we, we are more reactive than we are proactive. So we wait until something goes wrong, then we, we begin to react. And of course, in reacting, we lose our argument. See, I, I understand the place of law enforcement here because as a priest, I know how the church ignored the call and the cries of innocent children, young altar servers who were abused by bad priests. And the church ignored it and ignored it and ignored it until when the church was forced by the media to respond, of course, it, 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 it reacting of course because you did, you were not proactive you were forced to react what did the church do the church had to move so far away just to make it make sense that's exactly what we're trying to do now with abolishing law enforcement no we don't have to abolish law enforcement just as we did not abolish the catholic priesthood just because we had some bad priests who abused children yes we got those people arrested or got them prosecuted or in some ways Got them out of the priesthood. Yeah, we can do that with the police too. We sanitize the priest. They, 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 we tried so far to sanitize the Catholic priest too because we found out there were some bad apples in there. But to cover them up, you might imagine how long we covered them up for so long until the church decided to do what we tried. This may be the moment to also do what is right with our police force. Make sure all the criminal elements in the police force and in the law enforcement have no business with the law because they do not have the character and the spirit that the law requires for it to work for everyone, for all of God's children. That's what we must do. Not disband the police, not disband law enforcement or, or defund law enforcement. Yeah, we could prioritize our, our, our needs. But disbanding and, 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 and abolishing, that does not make any sense. You, you see what happened in the first reading. Elijah was a good prophet. He, was, he represented the good cop, represented the good priest, represented the good politician or whatever. And then you had 
Unfortunately, you had a good number of these other bad guys, 450 of them. But you realized that the prophecy wasn't banned. The prophets were not banned. That no more prophecy I'm banning. God didn't them ban. He says, okay, I'm going to sanitize prophecy and the prophets. I will take care of the bad guys who are defrauding and exploiting prophecy. And he did. 450 of them were disbanded. But prophecy was not. Elijah continued to be the prophet. And from him, Elisha and other prophets who did what prophecy was intended. We can do that too. So let us pray and let us walk together. It's responsible to fix what is broken. But it's not responsible to disband what is broken only because it's broken. After all, we are all broken in some way. But we try to fix ourselves. We must do the same with our society. Do the same with us, our church. Do the same with our law enforcement. Do the same with our society. As always, I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. That God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we just want to thank and bless you and adore you and worship you because of who you are and what you have done. We thank you for opening our minds and our hearts to recognize what is valuable and what is responsible and what is needful in our arguments. Help us to recognize the value and the importance of law. Help us to recognize the value and the importance of law enforcement but also give us the courage to fix what is wrong, to make what is right, and of course to heal the brokenness in our law enforcement and in our civil society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who haven't hurt by the law. There are so many who are in jail today who have no business with being there. There are some who have died as a result of bad laws and bad law enforcement. We ask Almighty God that you may help them find justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick. Pray especially for those who are battling coronavirus. Pray for those who are out there still marching. Help us, O oh God, to resolve this tension just so people may return home because greater risk still stands out there to this disease. Help us, O oh God, to be responsible, to be reasonable, and to be accountable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our medical and healthcare workers who will continue to risk for the next several months and maybe eat this virus. Protect them, O oh God, and keep them safe as they do good for our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. I bring to you, O oh God, the concerns of all those who have asked our prayers those who have birthdays today or other anniversaries, we bring all to you, O oh God. We pray for those who are sick, those who are grieving. Pray for those whose hearts are broken at this time. Pray and ask Almighty God that whatever their needs are, that your blessing may meet all of those needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother to pray for us and with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray that we may 
offer, that what we may offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have gone to their, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. And from me to you and your loved ones, may God's peace rest and abide, now and always. Amen. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This moment of spiritual communion, let us pray and invite the Lord to bring us his body and his blood. Gracious God, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you nourish us in his body and his blood. At this time where we are unable to receive that nourishment physically, we beg you that you may come to your sons and daughters who worship this day and nourish them spiritually with your body and with your blood. And we ask, O oh God, that their lives may be enriched by this sacrament in a very spiritual and real way. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May your healing work, O oh Lord, free us, we pray, from doing what is evil and lead us to do what is right. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to remind you once again that you, you are still the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. Please, do for yourself what God has done for you. Learn to love yourself. I believe if we learn to love ourselves, there will be less hate around the world because we cannot spew what we don't have. We can only give what we have. If we have love for ourselves, we are better able to love others. If we don't have love for ourselves, that's why you see all the craziness around. Let us learn to do for ourselves what God has already lavishly done for you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. To the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, we will sing We will sing a song to our Blessed Mother. We will sing Hail Holy Queen. Hail, Holy Queen, and throne above, O Maria, Hail, Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria, triumphal cherubim, Sing with us, ye seraphim. Heaven on earth resound the hymn. Salve, 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 Regina.